What's up world, I'm Mr. Vaca, and I am thrilled to finally be able to share with you a secret project that I've been working on with Google for Education and our teachers here at Mahanasin for the past two years. This is a game changer in education, a new tool called Practice Sets. And in today's episode, we're gonna interview the product manager of Practice Sets and give you a sneak peek what it looks like and possibly an opportunity to sign up for the beta launch later this year. So without further ado, Let's take it away. We are so lucky today to have the product manager of practice sets from Google itself, Miss Taryn Sullivan. Thank you so much for coming today. Hi, great to be here. Thanks for having me. We have been working with Taryn and her team at Google for a while now, building the practice sets program. Well, not building it. They are doing the building. We're just helping and giving our feedback. And it has been an unbelievable journey. So Taryn, like, if you had to briefly, what, how would you summarize what is practice sets? Yeah, well, Bill, your team has been instrumental in giving feedback. So it's it's evolved a lot since we first started, right? Practice sets is a new feature launching in Google Classroom that uses our assistive learning technology to help teachers create more engaging and interactive um, assignments. It's really unique though, because they can use their existing content that they already own or create new from scratch. They'll bring it into the to the tool They'll be able to transform it into something that's auto-graded and provides real-time feedback and hints along the way for students as they get stuck. And then it gives them these real-time insights where they can see the performance for the whole class and be able to identify um, learning gaps um, across the class for the assignment. It has changed the game for us personally. And when everyone else gets to see what this is all about, I think the hype is going to be through the roof. For the teacher, what does it mean for them? What are they going to be seeing? All right. So for a teacher, they'll be able to bring in existing content that they already own and use and love, um, or they can create new content um, and they'll bring it into this tool. They'll be able to bring in the problem stem. Then they can add correct answers, which will enable auto grading. Um, and then our assistive learning technology can take that problem, automatically match it to a learning skill. And with that, we're able to attach hints and resources and tutorial videos and all kinds of supportive content um, that for the student will help them right in the moment. And then for the student, they're able to then open this assignment right from Google Classroom. They can show their work. We have all modalities so they can use ink like with a stylus um, or touch. They can type using keyboard and mouse. They have a math keyboard that's built in as well. Um, so they can answer the problems. They can work through and show their work so teachers can really see what how they're thinking. Um, and if they get stuck uh, or they just need some extra help, all of that is there right there available for them and they're able to see um, performance insights across that class what problems students struggled with to help inform their teaching plan what have you seen with other districts in terms of teacher workload how has it affected it yeah so i think one of the keys is making sure that it's very easy to bring this content in and, it, and transform it in this way um, but then that auto grading seems to be one of the biggest time savers you're where... right that auto grading has been huge. It, it's what we call here at Mahanasin the Google magic. So what grade levels and subjects does practice sets cover? Okay, great question. So we are launching the beta for grades three through 12, which equates to about ages nine through 18 um, and all core subjects. So we'll have coverage. Um, I'd say that our strongest coverage is in math and science in the early days in terms of those hints and resources that pop up for um, students. Um, but we want all teachers be, to be able to use it in the K-12 setting. Math has been a real challenge and can be difficult using sometimes with like Google Forms and stuff. So how are you able to incorporate practice sets with math? So math was a very strong early ask from the pilot teachers um, because I think of exactly what you said. I think on a lot of platforms, it's challenging to do math and do that work step by step. And because practice sets enables you to write on the screen, right? And actually be able to, to show your work and work through problems. We wanted to make sure that we enable that for the answer too. So not only can students write in an answer with like a math expression, which can be auto graded, 
But we also have a new robust math keyboard, um, both on the teacher side and student side. So um, they're able to enter in those math expressions uh, and, and within science as well, right? So any kind of symbolic expression can be accepted and can be auto graded. The other cool thing that we've added is an equivalence checker. So we have this assistive learning technology that can really understand what that answer is and be able to check that x plus y equals y plus x, right? Or that 0.5 and 1 half are equivalent, which can be really powerful for teachers, as you know, um, so they don't have to put in every single potential correct answer. Absolutely. It, it can be quite the helpful tool, if I do say so myself. It saved a lot of time. Practice Sets has interactive questions. What does that mean? OK, so we're interactive from two different perspectives. As students are working on the practice set, they can check their answer as they go and get that immediate feedback, right? So that interactivity allows them to maintain their confidence and build on that and get the help when they need it through the hints and resources. Um, but the other thing that we really want to empower teachers to build are more interactive problem types in the future. So when you start with what's existing, you have a lot of multiple choice and check boxes and fill in the blank um, and long answer which are all great. Um, and that is where we're gonna launch at beta. But the platform that this is built on enables much deeper interaction, um, meaning that someone could uh, have connected lines. You could have a rotating model in the future where you label it. Um, you could bring in simulations and lots of really great ways for students to dive deeper into these concepts, dive deeper into their showing their thinking so that teachers can understand how they got to the answer and not just what the final answer is. So how did the teacher feedback impact the creation of the practice sets? And what did you ask the teachers to accomplish during this alpha? I love working on the Google for Education team because we work so closely with educators from like the beginning, ideation all the way through, right, Bill? Like we've talked to you since this is just the kernel of an idea. And so um, I would say that very early on, we brought together educators that, um, you know, of, from all around the world, and we talked to them about their problems, about the challenges and the, you know, the, the tedious tasks they spend time on, um, the, the challenges they have around kind of curating and editing and personalizing their content, right? That, that seems to be some of the biggest challenges they have around learning content, and we wanted to work together with them to design a solution. And so we did that. Um, and then as we wanted to actually roll out these early pilots, we had teachers bring their own content into the tool and actually assign it to students and use it in their class. Um, and, you know, your district was one of many that was really took that on. And we're, we're so grateful for that feedback because while sometimes it can be buggy and it definitely is is an early, early, early version, um, that feedback is what driven iteration upon iteration. I think you all have been a part of at least three pilots, right? Um, so Bill would love to hear from you how you felt we were like responded because we, we really read every piece of feedback that comes in from teachers and we take a lot of pride in in making it as actionable as possible and driving to really rich features as soon as we can. So that feedback that you're talking about and that your team are listened to, that you actually listened to it, it made us feel like we were talking to celebrities. Uh, like really, we couldn't believe that we would give feedback and the next day or that day get a response back being like, great idea. We're going to implement that in the next week. And then that next week, it's actually there. That feature was there. It gave our teachers this new like spark of oh my goodness we are actually helping create this product and watched it grow throughout those three sessions we have had teachers begging for it to come back because they just they they feel like they're part of the team and that's something that we never had felt before and and anything that we had done before uh, working with your team the communication has been unbelievable. And we have learned so much just from working with you that we are now doing in our district because that open and honest feedback, being able to tell your team, hey, this isn't working and it needs to be like this. You were receptive and you encouraged that. And it, it was just really great like role model and, mo and just structure for us to follow and 
that's why we love working with you and we'll do anything that we can to continue this, this relationship because it's been a blessing. You all are the heroes here and we're really just trying to empower um, you with the tools that you need. And so for us, it just has to be about listening, right? If we don't get that hard feedback, if we don't get um, the stuff that went really wrong, um, then it's not going to work for anyone. And so I think that that's why our team is so set on making sure we we find the the good, bad and the ugly um, in these early versions and um, and and for for always. Right. Yeah. Um, and just just so everyone knows, Taryn would spend like an hour of her day, like once a month, just to like meet with us and just be like, hey, tell me everything. And we would send videos too. And the students loved it. They thought this was the coolest thing. They would make little videos and send them to Taryn and her team through Google Drive and they would respond back to them. It, it was just really, really exciting. It, it's invaluable. The The feedback is why we do this. So um, again, I I cannot take any credit for, for that part of it. It's, it's the teacher ideas that fuel this, right? And so we need to be partners. We need to do this together. That's the only way we're going to build a great product. We don't want to go away in ivory tower and go build something and try to tell teachers that this is the way they should be working. Um, we're, we're very aware of the fact that, and we have a lot of former educators, right? We have um, amazing PhD in learning science. Like we have incredible team members, but everyone understands that we are not in the classroom every day. Um, and we have to stay very close to the people that are. It's the only way to build a great tool. One of the things that we struggled with, with practice sets, was that when we created one, we would have to do it on our own. We weren't able to, we become very accustomed to sharing Google Docs or Google Slides, but this feature wasn't built in the alpha when we were using it. But is there any plans for using it in the future? Yeah, so excited to mention that um, early days, we'll be able to have um, co-teachers reuse posts and be able to assign the practice sets as well. They won't be able to do like editing on those, but at least they can assign them and use them. Um, and we're working towards a much more robust solution around sharing that is much more aligned to the overall Google way. We, we know it's a major need and it's just a ton of work and we don't wanna hold back the whole product for that work. We wanna get it out there and get the feedback and keep polishing it before, um, you know, alongside of that work. One thing that you mentioned was student engagement. How has practice sets increased student engagement? So from our early testing so far, um, one thing that we've realized is that that immediate feedback for students as they're working through a problem is really critical, especially when they can't uh, get that feedback from a teacher. So something that was a little unexpected for me, um, but probably for all of you resonates. Uh, we heard from a teacher early on that um, often she has her high flyers raise their hand right after they finish the first question to kind of get a gut check and assurance that they're on the right track. She says they often are, but she has to go around and give them that assurance that they can move forward um, when she should be spending time with, with the students that really need that like more guidance and more help. And so when they were using practice sets, it was just so much easier because they could check it right away. That confidence was built. They were able to move forward and she wasn't constantly interrupted just to kind of give that, that mark of assurance. Um, it's, curious it's what you all saw. Yeah. In your district, I know you had some interesting cases as well. Yeah. So we had, we were doing some in Miss Wolfanger's class, shout out to Miss Wolfanger for all the hard work you've done. Uh, but we, we would do simple like math, practice sets where you would just do like time tests to see how many division questions they could get in a five minute span. And what we found, which was crazy, the amount of questions that students were able to get correct using the practice sets program compared to an original, like how we would traditionally do it, just on we paper. saw a massive spike in students getting more problems done through the practice sets than in the other way. And we were asking, we would ask students like, what are you doing? Like, why is it? And some students would say, oh, it's so cool because you had like little confetti and graphics and like, yay, and balloons popping up. But the real thing that we found was that students would say, I knew what I was doing wrong, or I knew that I was getting it right. And so I wasn't stalling like how they would. So imagine when I was back in fifth grade, if I got to a math problem, sometimes when I was stuck, I would spend a lot of time on that and forget to move forward. But now, with the practice sets, you have that immediate feedback, just like you said, that gives the student that support or that confidence to just take off. And it, it was really exciting. We had some incredible growth. We we made some charts that were showing the differences in the graph. And then sadly, the 
early access had to close because you're building it and you're making new innovations and trying to get it to this really this next level, which I can't wait for it to come out and see where it gets. Um, so speaking of that, what is the rollout plan for uh, practice sets? So we're launching the practice sets beta this year and it will be available in English only for all customers that are in the teaching and learning SKU or EDU plus. But we encourage everyone to sign up so we can get your feedback and keep you in the loop as to how things evolve. But the other thing we're doing for the beta launch is inviting teachers to training. So we're gonna have virtual and hopefully on-site training for Practice Set Academy, where we'll be bringing teachers together to build content, work through it, and we're offering that professional development uh, to the community because we really want to continue getting that feedback at a larger scale and really support teachers to understand what their next needs are. That is so exciting. I've not been able to talk about this besides anyone inside our Mahanison organization. And now that we're finally gonna be able to reveal it, I can just imagine the amount of teachers and educators across the country that are going to be dying to get into this beta. It's going to be so cool to see everyone on there and using it really in the wild. And I'll make sure to put those links down in the description box below. So if you want to be on the interest form or if you're part of that program and actually want to sign up for the beta access, you can do that right there. And that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much, Taryn, for answering all of our questions and for sharing with the world all of this work that you and your team have been working on. I can't wait for the beta to finally release. No, thank you for all your great work. The feedback's been incredible and that that's really my goal is a big thanks and inviting more and more feedback. So thank you to all the teachers out there for all the work you do. As a mom of a four and six year old, I know teachers um, have the hardest job in the world. Awesome, thank you again, Taryn. All right, take care. If you're interested in signing up for more information or you're one of the Education Plus users and would like to access the beta later this year, you'll find the links down in the description box below. Thank you again so much for watching. Don't forget to work hard, play hard, and I'll catch you next time.